welcome back. So today we're going to finish up our discussion on the American Revolution. And again, in class we will look at a lot of different battles. This is very much just kind of a, a glossing over of some of the major important parts of it. But this video will be kind of short because we're actually going to get to the Battle of Yorktown and why it is so important. So in your notes you need to list this as the Revolution Part 2. Again, as I've said time and time again, and I'm sure you're probably sick of listening to me say this, if you've not watched part one, or if you've not done any of the other 1.1, 1 uh, 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 or 1.4 objectives, you need to make sure you go back and watch all of those again, because none of this will make any sense of how we got here if you have not already done that. So, the revolution's tides has have turned after the Battle of Saratoga. The French are helping out. The Spanish are helping out. Things are going well for the colonists. And suddenly they find themselves at a town called Yorktown in 1781. General Cornwallis, the leader of the British army, moves his Brits, or his, his soldiers to Virginia. And while supplies are running low, he thing, he's starting to realize very quickly that things are looking bleak for him. He's calling for help. He's trying to get the rest of the, the British to help him out. Um, but they are cut off, and they're cut off by the French, who had been blockading all of the ports along the, the eastern seaboard of the United States, or the future United States, um, in a hopes to keep the British from being able to resupply with men, with ammunition, with weaponry, all the things that you need to fight this war. General Washington will lead a secret march, again, more of those guerrilla tactics, and he, him, along with 7,000 French troops, will completely surround the British. You take them to the, to the west, you take the, 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 the French uh, uh, ships to the east, and Cornwallis is now completely uh, surrounded. By October 19th, 1781, after eight weeks of fighting, General Cornwallis will see the writing on the wall and he will officially surrender. With the surrender of Cornwallis, the war is effectively over. There will be a number of little small battles and skirmishes, but for the most part, word gets out pretty quickly that England has surrendered. And so now it's time to negotiate peace. And so, who is going to help broker that peace? Well, France is. And so we're going to have what is known as the Treaty of Paris. This is actually the second Treaty of Paris, because if you remember, we've already done one for the, uh, for the French and Indian War. 1783, the two t sides sit down together, and it's going to actually take almost two years to negotiate this peace. And so on September 3rd, 1783, the British agree to a number of things. One, the United States is free and independent, and they will, they have their own independence now. Number two, their borders are the Mississippi River, the edge of Canada, and Florida. They'll gain Florida as a result of this. Number three, the United States can fish in Canadian waters now without being harassed by Canadian or uh, British citizens. Number four, the British are going to have to pay off a number of war debts. Um, that is going to be a bit of a tricky situation, which we will talk about later on. And number five, any captured slaves must be returned. During the war, as the, as the British would move throughout the colonies, if they would encounter slaves, they would often emancipate them, either give them safe passage back to the, to Britain, or let them, you know, follow along in the army and be cooks or do a number of other odd tasks. Um, as a result, the British must give up a lot of those people. Now, again, that's going to be a tricky situation. Will they actually give these people up? Will they not? Uh, we really don't know. And so let's talk about really quickly, how is the war actually won? Because we've talked about a lot of dates and a lot of facts and information, but we've now talked about basically how did the colonists end up winning this thing? How did the, how did, how did the patriots, this, this group of individuals who had lived half a world away from, from Britain, defeat the largest and mightiest empire at that time? And there's a number of things. One, they had home field advantage. They knew the terrain. They knew where they were fighting, right? They, this is their home, right? They'd be like fighting in your backyard. You understand every nook and cranny. You understand every tree. You know how to move easily from one place to another. Number two, they have motivation for their cause. Remember, it's them who are trying to, to secede away from Britain, not the other way around. And so many of the British regulars, frankly, just don't care. A lot of them are, are going to say, and a lot of British citizens are going to say early on, if this is what it means to keep the empire together, maybe we should just let them go. I mean, are they really giving us that much in the long run? And mostly just headache, right? Number three, they had a lot of civilian support. While there are going to be a number of people known as loyalists who are going to, you know, push back against this idea of independence, um, for the most part, independence is fairly popular. And so a lot of people are going to be helping them out, which means they can give you food, they can give you ammunition, they can give you a place to hide out if the British are after you. Number four, they have great leadership. Um, whether it's the Marquis de Lafayette, 
even Benedict Arnold before he commits his traitorous act. They are good generals. They're good leadership. Washington is a great leader at this time. He had forged years of trial and error from the French and Indian Wars and early skirmishes, right, to becoming the general that we know. And so for the colonists, they had great leadership in addition to having all these other things. And then five, they got help from their friends. France and Spain both really helped the colonies out with money, with supplies, with ammunition, with naval blockade. Remember, the colonists have, a, the, the patriots have almost no navy at the beginning of this war. And France kind of gives them a navy, right? Even though they're, they're still French ships, they're going to block those, those ports. They're going to do the things that they need to to help the, the, the colonists um, keep things afloat, basically. And so we've come to our last question time of this theme, and that's, how is this important, Mr. Barker? Why do I need to know this? And if at this point you're still sitting here going, huh, I can't quite, quite understand why I need to know this, then we've got some serious issues. But let's look at two things. The Battle of Yorktown. It's the last major battle of the revolution, and it really does signal the end of British colonial rule. Um, it is going to take quite a while for the British to, to, to recover from this, both financially, but also from a pride standpoint. And they will have a lot of animosity towards the, the Americans for years to come. Um, hint, hint, the War of 1812, right? We also, when we talk about the Treaty of Paris, it officially grants independence of the now United States, not just the, the American colonies. And from here, we'll talk about what's known as the Articles of Confederation, our first attempt at a government, all the way up to the Constitution of the United States. That, although, comes next, and that's going to be in our next theme, is basically, now that we've got independence, now that we're doing it our own way, uh, what do we do? Because sometimes it's a lot harder to lead than it is to want to have a revolution. But we'll talk about that later. And so that's it. You have finished all of this first uh, theme. Um, from here, we'll talk much more in class about what happens after the revolution now. How do we build a government? How do we rule for ourselves? Should we have a king? Should we have something else, right? What kind of government should we have? How are we going to use those enlightenment ideas, not just to create revolution, but now actually to set up a government? We'll talk about all that next. But for now, make sure you have all this in your notes. If you have any questions, please reach out to me or leave me a, a, a message in your notes and I will get back to you on those, all right? Otherwise, have a fantastic rest of the day. Congratulations, you've made it through all 10 of these videos, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.